Stormgate has a tough uphill battle to fight in the coming months. Many fans who have tried it are left conflicted, and the divisive feedback among the RTS community have people asking the same question. Is Stormgate bad? It has claimed to be a spiritual successor for Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2. Stormgate is a spiritual successor to classic real-time strategy games like Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2. Such a statement has caused high expectations from fans of the hugely successful Blizzard titles, as well as the many other RTS games. For those of you unfamiliar with an RTS, real-time strategy game, it's where you build a base, gather resources, and amass an army to take control of vital strategic points and defeat your opponent. Welcome to my review of Stormgate. My name is Witty, and I have been a real-time strategy player since Dune 2. I started my YouTube career playing StarCraft 2 and founded a dedicated community around my favorite RTS, Warcraft 3. So you can expect many comparisons between these games and Stormgate to come. I've spent 22 hours in Stormgate, giving my initial thoughts and opinions oh. in my first impressions video. I said that if you guys help get 500 likes on that video, I'll make a review video of Stormgate, and that's what I'm here to do. In this review, I'll talk more in depth detail on the game covering the visuals, audio, and features that make the game Stormgate. If you enjoy this content, like the video and subscribe. You guys really came through and helped out on my first impressions video, getting it over 1,700 likes. So if you could do the same, except see if we can get 2,000 likes on this video, that'd be absolutely awesome. Thank you. Hopefully the YouTube algorithm will help others see it. So share the video so even the Stormgate developers can take the many, many criticisms that I'm about to give on board. I'd like to see Stormgate be successful as the Frost Giant team seem like genuinely nice people. So if you are watching this, then please take my review, the positives and the negatives as criticisms that can perhaps help make Stormgate the RTS game that fans so want it to be. I am aware that Frost Giant is aware of player concerns and feedback, so when I talk negatively about features of Stormgate, I hope you are aware that I'm sure they intend to fix this stuff, but I feel it is still important to point it out so we can continue this video with a chance of getting this stuff fixed. Don't be that YouTube guy that is like, but wishy, Stormgate is early access. That's a deflective argument that attempts to brush off legitimate criticism and won't work with me, buddy. So what is Stormgate? Well, Stormgate is a new free-to-play, real-time strategy game set in a sci-fi post-apocalyptic Earth in the 22nd century. Developed by Frost Giant Studios and backed by a budget of around $35 million from investors and fans who also helped fund kickstart the game wanting to see Stormgate succeed. But can Stormgate succeed? That is the question we are all wondering. After a rocky start with their early access release, mostly because of its early access pack prices, many fans are turning against Frost Giant's Stormgate as tensions rise due to resentment with how the Kickstarter funding unfolded. So can Stormgate prove that they can provide a quality real-time strategy experience that can satisfy fans' anticipations and get them back on board? With Stormgate being available on Steam, the game will be accessible to a potentially very large audience. So the pressure is on to sway the current mixed reviews to a more positive outlook to persuade new players to check out the game and give it a go. And perhaps get invested in investing in making the game profitable. As Stormgate is a free-to-play model, Frost Giant plans to monetize Stormgate making campaign chapters, co-op heroes and in-game cosmetics available for purchase from the in-game store. Stormgate currently has features such as the campaign with six playable missions, 1v1 PvP, 3v3 co-op PvE versus AI, replay functionality, and a custom lobby to try out specific maps. I'll discuss these later in the video. The game has three playable races, the Vanguard, human defenders of Earth who use robotic technology, the Infernal Host, demonic warmongers seeking to invade and destroy everything, the Celestials, advanced aliens with magic-like technology. Hmm, looks familiar. You can argue that Stormgate is unoriginal in its design as it copies heavily from the StarCraft universe. Even the story elements have many similarities and mechanically the game operates like many other real-time strategy games. Where building a base, managing economy and controlling the map with an army are crucial. However, Stormgate has found its niche by blending Warcraft 3 creek camps with StarCraft 2 map objectives that will give players reasons to constantly engage with the map strategic terrain points, and of course, each other. Vying for these creep camps will reward the player with resources, vision, healing, energy, and speed boosts, as well as spawning a siege NPC unit, like in Heroes of the Storm, that can be tactically cleared for the right time and push towards your enemy. 
The difficulty of these creek camps will increase each time they are cleared upon reset to keep up with the player power as the game progresses. These contestable map objectives will help strengthen the satisfaction of gameplay for players competing and viewers watching tournaments as different maps will require different tactics, thus reducing the chance of the game feeling stale and predictable. One thing I'd add though is a visible numbered timer so it's more clear when a camp will reset and become available. Stormgate has a huge quality of life win in the form of Quick Build, a production tab utilizing the QWERT hotkeys to allow players to efficiently build structures, units and research technology without selecting individual workers or buildings. What's great about this is that the workers will return to their previous job after using this. Overall, it eases the stress on the player's macro duties as they can concentrate more on playing the game. Speaking of easing the workload for the player, BuddyBot is an innovative AI helper that assists new players to learn and understand how to play the game. I'll let the developers explain it. The BuddyBot is maintaining your worker saturation, building workers, expanding, making production structures, and then making army units out of those production structures. Another unique feature Stormgate brings to the table is the top console bar, an interactive part of the user interface that builds with power over time, allowing players to spend that power on abilities that can alter the fabric of the gameplay itself. Many such powers are integral for pushing economic swings, controlling strategic points, and swaying the momentum of gameplay battles. By using these abilities to interact with units and structures, typically by buffing, debuffing, and damaging, as well as creating temporary vital faction-based units or structures to control the pace of gameplay. Each faction has their own unique powers, which are further altered depending on which hero you play as. So this is a great feature that adds a lot of interaction for the player to engage with gameplay and make strategic choices. The ping wheel is another great quality of life addition to the RTS genre, allowing players to communicate more easily with teammates, which will definitely be needed if Stormgate is going to be focusing quite heavily on the cooperative gameplay. And setting jump locations with hotkeys like F1, F2, F3, etc. is useful for keeping an eye on hotspot areas of the map with a click of a button. The learn to play section is filled with helpful tips and guides for new players, and I like that the roadmap gives a clear intention of what is to come. In the future, Stormgate will also feature a map editor, weekly mutators, integrated tournaments, and a mini war chest to keep players engaged. Also coming will be 3v3 PvP with playable heroes, and the game's campaign will be able to be played cooperatively, which will encourage players to bring in their friends to play with them. Whatever friends are. and recruit some allies. Oh, let's move on to visuals. Ah! Graphically, Stormgate has the community conflicted. The art style has rubbed fans the wrong way with a simplistic, cartoony, Toy Story style direction that removes much of the tension from dramatic moments in cinematics and in-game cutscenes. Just what is the artistic theme Stormgate is trying to drive home here? What do they identify as? Bright and cutesy? Or dark and brooding? The current mix of seemingly both leaves me more confused than anything. Stormgate's latest patch insinuates Frost Giant are addressing players' negative feedback concerns and are willing to attempt to fix them. The pop-up notification upon loading Stormgate has changed its message to lower expectations for players when it comes to experiencing the game. In the latest roadmap update, Tim Campbell Hi, this is Tim. tries to placate players, reminding them that Stormgate is a work in progress and that it was valuable to release content early enough so that they could receive negative feedback feedback with which they can act upon to fix before finalizing anything. The problem with that is that it came with a hefty price tag of $25 or more for players who in this case, he may as well be calling glorified beta testers as a consequence. If they truly had concerns about the direction of Stormgate and wanted feedback to help fix changes for the game before it's too late, then this early content such as the campaign should have been available during beta phases, where players are not paying but happy to try out the game and give their feedback. Whilst I'm sure Tim has good intentions, and I believe he is being openly honest, this is effectively admitting screwing up whilst passing it off as intentional, which is a bold move. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. But I am willing to concede that it's still better to be open and honest, albeit in a somewhat clumsy, desperate manner, so that both the developers and players can work together moving forward to help progress the overall quality for the benefit of the game. So I'll stop busting your balls for the moment, Tim. After all, you made the awesome Rexar campaign for Warcraft 3, which deserves respect. So let's get back into Tim's response to player feedback. These changes will be across the board, including lighting, environments, ground textures, units, buildings, resources, moving more 
The look of the game is a point of contention for players, so improvements here will benefit all game modes of Stormgate. After all, first impressions matter. Ah! As displayed before in my first impressions video, I think Stormgate does have some great atmospheric moments in game cutscenes that immerse you, the player, into believing that these places exist and the characters are real. I particularly like the way environments are used to shed light on a character's mannerisms and behavior, like these stealthy gravens sneaking through the water to blend in. So I'd recommend carrying forward that attitude and world building to help transition cinematics and other spots where the game is weaker to bring them up to par. Now, I'd like to take a moment to deep dive into the user interface. The UI is anchored to the center of the screen with the minimap, resource numbers, and unit information panel being in close proximity for easy visibility. And because of this, I think it does its job well enough. I like the inclusion of an in-game timer that will be useful for players learning build orders or timing attacks, as well as just having a reference point for how long the game has been going. Some ideas I had for possible improvements to the UI are as follows. A display for the overall work account in the UI that could show the current number of workers operating on each Luminite and Ferium resource by the player. A resource per second display on the physical Luminite and Ferium locations to let the player know just how efficient their workers are. Adding the ability to let players hold down a hotkey once to produce multiple units. Make it so you can rally onto the hero portrait at the top right by right clicking onto it. Likewise, I think that selecting a unit or structure and right clicking on the control group panel at the right to make that unit or structure become the hotkey group is rather redundant, since you can just do that already with control plus one, etc. Instead, this could be replaced with a better utility, such as being able to rally structures and selected units to numbered groups you already have hotkeyed on the right hand side by right clicking onto that numbered hotkey group on the right panel. You should also be able to assign a hotkey to check for the most recent pings or alerts made during gameplay for faster player response. In regards to the unit information panel, you could add a DPS tag to the right of the damage that auto calculates based off the unit's items and buffs. Speaking of buffs, why are there only a few shown before piling them all into the same icon that requires you to hover over to get the information? Surely there's more space? I think it's important to show all buffs and debuffs active on a hero or unit so that information feedback is constant and players can react accordingly. You could also make it more clear how effective armor actually is for the unit too. Currently it's just a flat number that doesn't particularly mean much. A damage reduction percentage added to the right of it would give players a much clearer indicator as to how tanky their unit actually is. For items, I'd like to see the addition of green text to the item tooltips that give a brief and clear indication for the player to quickly read as to what an item actually does. For example, on the healing bandage, it can state that it heals 200 health. Also, for items, make it so you can right-click them off your inventory to place on the ground or pass it to other heroes like in Warcraft 3. I think it would be good to display more information such as pictures of the map and player names when you're on the loading screen for versus, co-op matches or replays. I'd like to be able to see the numbered amount of experience gained by the hero or unit when hovering over the experience bar. This also applies to the co-op hero lobby. Some players may want to see how much experience they need to achieve the next level for their hero. And when you finish a game, make the game return to where the player was just before that game started. Currently you are kicked back to the main menu lobby regardless of what you last played and whether you quit or finish the game naturally. This is just a nice touch to let the player get straight back into the games with less than annoying clicks to go through. As we start to replace gameplay models and story sequences with cinematic models, we'll be adding facial animations and lip sensing, as well as bringing them proportion into a more realistic range. Yes, this includes some of those beefy forearms. We are also going to revisit the shaky cam to help make it feel better. Animating character portraits instead of having the current lifeless 2D stilted images should help convince the player the game isn't still in alpha and tackling the scuffed body proportions, particularly on the female characters, especially the main protagonist Amara, will be a step in the right direction to getting a good first impression with players trying out the game for the first time. We are also going to be revisiting the mission briefings themselves, updating the videos, revisiting specific scripts and voice overs changing how items work, changing mission objectives and scripted defense. I'd like to see a less bare bones campaign quest list with better imagery instead of whatever this is. It would also be great if once you beat a mission, you can click back on it and see a list of all the possible available in-game mission objectives, be they main or side quest, completed or unfinished. This would give levels some replayability and players a sense of completion upon seeing all quest lists finish with a green tick at the end. Shall we bet some bits on just how many times he's going to go around in a circle before he stops flapping his wings? Oh shit!
However, quest indicators still aren't as clear as they can be. For example, on Campaign Mission 5, Fronos, upon Amara stepping on the teal hexagon, two shadow demons are spawned, but at no point is an objective added to tell you to defeat them in order to move on to the next stage. You can literally just ignore the fight and continue moving top right, where she can walk through the door to the end of the level that is closed. Heck, some players might just do this naturally because it isn't obvious that the demons have spawned and might be wondering what is happening and what to do next. So you could also potentially include an audio voice line from our main protagonist, Amara, saying, I need to defeat these demons as a handy reminder to keep players informed on what they need to do next. This is one of many clear examples of why the campaign receives such a backlash from the community, because it's unpolished, basic, and not thoroughly thought out. You've since added a disclaimer at the start of the campaign, stating that it is work in progress, but remember that players are paying for the campaign experience, and if it feels unfinished, they will feel unsatisfied. This is your feedback that our starting point invites a lot of direct comparisons as with our factions. But please consider that the first few steps of many heroes' journeys often look similar. We've only just begun our character's story arcs. And we have way more in store for each of them as their journeys continue to unfold. It's fine to pay homage, but we'll just have to wait and see if time will tell whether Stormgate can flesh out their own universe and have players care about it. Our characters, specifically Amara, can benefit from additional development to further flesh them out. Including coming through the dialogue, writing some of her lines and we're recording some of her voice over the strength of the character's portrayal, and make sure that her perspective on the Vanguard story is engaging. Let's roll! Go, go, go! Please continue to give feedback and suggestions for what changes you would like to see us make to her, or to her other characters. My suggestion is simple. Make your characters more likable. Witty dialogue delivered with charisma in a humane manner as they face this dire apocalyptic world with some self-deprecating humor goes a long way to getting the player on board with how that character acts and behaves. Little Jimmy Rayner, the people's hero. <laughs> Tagus <Tarkus> Finley. <laughs> nice suit. Pays to be prepared. I heard they put you on ice. Live sentence. What? To give you time off for good behavior? That's right, old buddy. I'm a model citizen now. First, who is your daddy and what does he do? We've recently finished prototyping a hero leveling system. This system provides more choices to unlock than can ever actually be attained at the same time, so you need to make some tough decisions throughout the campaign. More player choice is always good. Heroes of the Storm, I mean, Heart of the Swarm, did a good job of making hero abilities so fun you had a tough time choosing. I should mention that a lot of player progression is locked behind heroes in Stormgate, as they can be leveled, unlocking new units and abilities as well as other goodies to help switch up gameplay. They can equip gear and cosmetics too. Second, we are also planning to extend our co-op gear system into the campaign missions. This feature will be designed to allow players to research and equip gear choices that provide various advantages to gameplay. The general idea is that as you play through the campaign and make different decisions, you will lock different gear choices that enable you to tweak your forces loadout in the Raptor 1 before deploying into missions. This sounds similar to the StarCraft 2 campaign where you can branch down different paths depending on which planet or character you choose to help. And in the Warcraft 3 custom campaign, Lord of the Clans, players can boost hero abilities, game altering mechanics and purchase better quality companions over time. I believe making choices on abilities and how to gear up characters will thoroughly improve the gameplay immersion. We are also grateful for all your feedback during this critical early access phase. Even the comments that were hard to read. Yeah, sorry about that. Now let's talk about how buildings, heroes and units look in Stormgate. I find the look of buildings to be serviceable, but the heroes and units are hit and miss. The concept art doesn't always translate to the final product. Reforge had that problem too. We already know about Scuffed Amara. Malok reminds me of a fiery Warcraft 3 Lich or Diablo's Mephisto. Orellana has an intriguing quirky look, but the puffled armbands and mad scientist sunglasses don't quite sit right. I think Blockade gets the job done as a sturdy human resistance veteran with a solid voice performance and tanky look. However, I'd suggest some more scuffed scars or a slightly grizzled appearance with dents and scrapes on his armor to indicate he has been through the wars. Speaking of wars, he is clearly the best, at least in my opinion, from a design perspective. 
Except for the stupid name. As for units, they still have a little too Disney-esque babyish cartoony vibes for my liking. Giving them more edge to the rounded shapes would make them look more menacing. This is probably why the Infernal units feel like they have the best design, since they are more unique and thematic. As for neutral NPC units, there is little variety here. I doubt they are a high priority right now, since this one doesn't even have a portrait. But the ones that do have the same face template, despite different hairstyles slapped on, just come across as cheap and very noticeable. Now, I'm going to slap down an example from StarCraft 2, just to rub salt into the wound from the first mission, showing off the variety of NPC models and unique looks that helped build the world in that game. Bringing it back to buildings for a moment, I had a positive note about the Vanguard pillbox. The pillbox would change how it behaves based on which Vanguard unit is inside, be it a damage dealer, worker or healer. This is a very creative move and should be recognized. I'm feeling generous, so I'll chuck in a few more positives of things I liked in Stormgate. The ranking system makes you feel proud of leveling your army and keeping them alive. Even though it's supposed to be unique for the Vanguard, I think it would be cool if all factions had it so players could compete to have the most champions champion units. I like the boss icons on the minimap to make it clear where your attention should be. Being able to trick enemy units into fighting creep camps is a bonus to gameplay mechanics. Enemy attack indicators are great and fun to play around. I think most units have interactive abilities that encourage engaging behavior with the map, environments, and combat situations. Although the hero abilities are quite bland. Except for War Z, who once again shines as a glowing example for what other Stormgate heroes should be. He feels much more like a MOBA hero with how you can manipulate his tool set of abilities to adapt to a variety of situations. The visual indicators of spells don't feel finished for many heroes. Amara's Shadow Step ability in particular irritates me as many times it won't seem to work and if that's the case there is no clear indication of it happening. So as a player I am missing out on that information feedback. For example in comparison here is how clean the Warcraft 3 Warden's Blink ability is. There are three steps. First the Warden will display a physical movement called a spell animation, which makes the character look like it's performing a new action, in this case the ducking movement. Second, there is a light blue spell animation on the location of the Warden when she casts Blink. Third, there is a more circular aura spell animation on the target location that the Warden is attempting to Blink to. Another thing that Warcraft 3 does fantastically well to give players information feedback is that this sequence of steps demonstrated will still perform even if the ability is cancelled from another source such as a stun, or in this case, a deliberate play from me to press stop immediately after blinking to demonstrate it. That is the kind of satisfaction I should like to feel when playing Stormgate's heroes. So the Snowplay game engine is responsible for smooth and fluid responsive unit behavior. However, the turn rate and attack weight of the units feels a little floaty and not impactful enough. The loading times are abysmal too. Loading the game, loading campaign missions, loading co-op, etc. I just feel like I'm stuck on loading. Takes a long time to get back into it though and load. Something's happening now. There you go. Oh, blimey. Major says not to let anyone through. Looks like you could use a hand. I am really playing on hard mode now. I can't see anything. Is this a mutator? Look, he's losing his health. Oh, there we go. I can't save him though. Oh, is he going to make it? Oh, he didn't make it. Let me patch you up, Amara. Another concern is the pathing and frame rate issues that are bogging down the feel of gameplay with units taking inefficient paths or getting stuck for too long. So this will need particular attention with constant iteration to find the sweet spot so that when players micro and macro, it feels satisfying. What's not satisfying is the annoying Ferium resource and how it regrows. It often cancels pre-built structures when it otherwise seemed fine to build. Also, what's up with this guy? Okay, he just disappeared. He has to go back to his home planet. Let's talk audio now and start with the positive. The music is really well done and thematically suits the game. Thanks to the talent creating the atmospheric tones to suit whatever faction you are playing. How'd that get in there? My favourite track still be in the Stormgate lobby theme. Mm -hmm. 
I think the unit sounds work for the most part. It's hard to criticize this without going into much finer detail, which would be way too time consuming. But I do have time to criticize one sound at least, and surprise, surprise, it's Scuffed Amara. I find her dual submachine guns are clunky weapons to attack with, and I notice that the gunfire doesn't match the awkward visuals for it too. Oh, I've been ready. But needless to say, making sounds punchy and visceral when they need to be will help players follow along with what they are hearing. I just noticed I kind of sounded a bit like the magistrate. <laughs> Who is responsible for this outrage? I am Captain. Suffice to say, I remain unconvinced that a horde offensive is as imminent as you and your kinsmen seem to think. Unlike that awesome performance from whoever that was, some of the voice acting and dialogue in Stormgate come across as just cringy and bad. But I've previously beaten this horse, so uh, I don't need to rip into Stormgate again for that. You can watch my first impressions video to see how that went. We know they are definitely aware of the awkward voice acting and dialogue, and are willing to address it, so let's hope they get it right. I will mention, though, that voice lines are too repetitive. Many characters only have a couple of lines and it gets old fast. Cloak and dagger. Terrorize. What's the op? Terrorize. What's the op? Terrorize. What's the op? Terrorize. What's the op? Terrorize. Stop! Stop! I'd recommend adding more. For example, Warcraft 3 has many types of unit responses based on selection, movement, and attacking. What? Be busy. No time for me alone. Not that Ready to work. Why not? Yes. Hmm? What do you want? Something you do. Be happy to work. Work. Okay. Do okay. Get them. I'll try. Unless you're this guy who just loves saying foul beast, foul beast, foul beast, foul beast. The frequency of narrator spam has been addressed. Capture. Capture point secure. Oh, Evacuation complete. Complete. Evacuation complete. But I would like to see more audio options so players can have the choice by adjusting the frequency of announcements as well as having a separate audio filter for announcements and error noises that they can toggle on or off in the menu. <laughs> Where sound is actually missing is the moment when you level up a character. An encouraging, congratulatory sound bite would positively oh. reinforce the player for progressing their hero's level. Another opportunity to utilize sound more efficiently would be during the campaign. As players explore the level, they encounter logs, which are clunky wall of text expositories that disappear once clicked off with no way to regain that information as there is no quest log. I think a great way to keep players invested in the lore of the campaign would be to have a quest log in the menu system that players can interact with and play logs audibly when clicked upon. This works best when the player can hear the audio while still being able to play and explore. AI text has come a long way and I'm sure it would be an easy fix to adapt it to any wall of text logs that the developers implement into the game. So turn those logs into audio logs and let the players get immersed in the game. By the light, a fierce battle indeed. Thank you friend, I am in your debt once again. I managed to find these on some of the Korgul warriors. Here, it's the least I can do. Let's talk game modes. 1v1 is the staple of Stormgate that everyone mostly agrees is solid right now. Tournaments are being made, watched and enjoyed, and balance updates are being made in response to soothe players' concerns with overpowered and underpowered units. Gameplay-wise, I think the game is in a decent enough spot for 1v1, with a good variety of units as well as an interactive console that lets players make power moves across the map that can sway the battle to their favour. A good tug of war vibe is what I get from one versus one. It's just the beginning, so plenty more changes will come over time to deal with what needs to be done to keep the gameplay refreshing and interesting. As long as the visuals are tuned up to be more satisfying with those that are playing and watching, 1v1 should continue to be entertaining. Free versus free co-op is my favorite mode. I might be biased because you get to play with a hero in the gameplay, and I love Warcraft 3, don't you know? It can be played cooperatively with friends, or you can search to join a queue to group up with two other random players, or even try to solo it. The game mode is PvE, that's player versus environment, where you take on a computer-controlled opponent. There are six maps. Wreck Havoc, Turf War, Ritual Woods, Abyssal Gates, Crooked Canyon, Infested Crater, 
For example, in Wreck Havoc, players must destroy the Iron Bolt, a giant heavily fortified structure. During this, they must stop Legion of Havoc convoys before they reach the enemy base. If they fail to stop the free convoys from reaching their destination, then the Iron Bolt cannon will fire missiles non-stop at your base until you are destroyed. What's neat about this is, as I mentioned before, you still have a short time window to go all in and destroy the Iron Bolt Cannon before you lose all of your bases and still seize victory in what seemed like an otherwise doomed situation. There is a secondary objective to destroy the four enemy outpost bases. This will ease the pressure on you, giving you more time to focus on the primary objective. Each of the maps have a variety of objectives to accomplish, which helps mix things up a bit, but generally the goal is to destroy bases, stop events such as convoys from reaching their destination, or bad things are going to happen to you. On top of that, the enemy will frequently send attack waves to keep you preoccupied in an attempt to slow you down from completing objectives. On top of all of that, there are of course creep camp map objectives to collect that will give you small edges and strategic advantages to gain momentum back. Some missions are more linear than others, but there are opportunities in some maps to in quote speedrun progress if players are good and fast enough at taking enemy bases down with swift execution, which is rewarding in itself as you get to win faster, get those sweet experience points and feel good doing it. The game is still being balanced, but there are cheeses one can perform to bypass many of the base destroying objectives such as the Spriggans and their ability to spawn shadow flyers that bombard buildings fast and effectively. Each map tends to have an antagonist that runs their mouth, spewing expository dialogue whilst you set up your base and get started. It's funny the first few times, but the main issue is it gets old after a while. That goes too for the maps. Even though 6 is a good starting number of maps, you will feel like you're in a bit of a repetitive loop after playing co-op for a few hours. Perhaps to address this, allow players more ways to beat a level and add more missions in general. If you have any thoughts to improve co-op, leave them in the comments below. I can suggest one thing right now, a veto option for players to turn on and off maps that they want to play. Another cause of concern is that when a teammate leaves the game, you do not gain control of their hero, units and buildings. They are effectively a sitting inactive duck. I would like to see Frost Giant implement a feature that allows players to share control manually as well as have this occur automatically if a player has left the game. It would be great to be able to see ally resources too so you can shout at them for being bad as well. The campaign, a make or break game mode for Stormgate that the developers definitely need to assign a lot of attention to. Many new players will try out the campaign after paying for it, so it has to satisfy, otherwise Stormgate will lose return customers if they don't have an interest in coming back to see how the campaign story plays out. The campaign is very divisive, being responsible for some of the most amount of negative feedback from the community, which in turn results in Stormgate receiving negative reviews on Steam. The knock-on effect is something that cannot be ignored. I appreciate the developers allowing players to pause now during the campaign, though that should be just the start of quality of life features that give players more control of their experience. Frost Giant should implement a quick save load feature along with the ability to manually save and load, not only for campaign but for custom games in the future too, be they single or multi player. So in the near future, I'd like to see proper save load pause functionality in campaign and custom games. Going back to the campaign, I read a comment that said, let me explore my ship and talk to the crew in between missions. StarCraft 2 did this and it provided a nice way to explore the setting and get to know the characters in a less stressful environment. These sections really elevated the game and it could do the same here. It's fair to say that this will help with the world building and let Stormgate develop a more rich lore for players to dive into. Speaking of getting to know the characters, I felt when playing the first campaign mission that it could benefit a lot from when introducing new heroes, they start with at least one ability. Preferably, the most iconic thematic ability. This will just add more personality to the character, allowing players to understand their toolkit and what the hero stands for by osmosis. I have already made criticisms of the campaign earlier in the video, so I will leave it with this one last obvious point. Players will not be paying money for this if they feel shortchanged. Many of the levels are uninspiring lackluster and so short they finish before you even know it leaving you a little dumbfounded it's the toy trunk find him a nice spot in the hole wait i did the level already how the fuck did i do the level already didn't i have to like destroy two more cars what i don't get it I commend Mission 4, The Stand, and Mission 6, Stormlands. What you did there worked, at least from a gameplay perspective. I felt engaged during those missions, so I'd suggest you use the player feedback from those levels when going forward with further campaign design. Otherwise, I foresee the campaign failing to retain players as they lose interest and are no longer engaged by its content. Well, 
now to the replay function. It's, uh, yeah, it needs work. I can give one suggestion at least. Add a work account. <laughs> <laughs> the custom lobby is very basic. It's essentially just there to host specific 1v1 or 2v2 maps to play against bots, friends, or random players. Otherwise, it's a tool to practice gameplay before stepping into Fursus games without punishment on ranking. Let's talk about the store. This is a free-to-play game after all, and Frost Giant need to make money to fund Stormgate. Right now, they are selling campaign missions, heroes, and pets. War chests are expected to come in the future, but I am unfamiliar with how those work because I am... Oh! I'm an old school player. Back in my day, you bought a game and what you got was what you got. And you liked it, damn it. I'm too old and set in my ways to care about microtransactions to progress my gameplay. I am the old man in his yard yelling at the kids with their microtransactions to get off my lawn. I expect Stormgate can further branch out into selling skins, portraits, overlays, voice packs, and maybe even content creator packs. It is a hard balance to strike, the ability to keep your game funded whilst not pissing off your players. I do not envy this position that they have put themselves in by making the game free to play. Let me know in the comments how you feel about free to play. What should Stormgate add to the store? And how much should it cost? Before I move into the conclusion of this video, jeez, this has gone really long. Please like and share the video if you could. I'd greatly appreciate it. I've spent a lot of hours compiling all of this together, so if you could slap that like button, you would really be doing me a big favor. I mean it. Back to the point I was about to make, I'd like to talk about a few extra quality of life improvements that Stormgate are working on, and some that should be added to the game. Achievements! Stormgate has confirmed that they are bringing achievements to the game. I'd recommend getting creative with these and designing some that require a lot of replayability to attain. Not in the boring way like defeat thing 1000 times. I mean where a player needs to beat the last boss and destroy all bases within one minute of each other. Something like that. Stuff that lets the player practice and strategize how they are going to overcome and accomplish said achievement. Codex. The codex should be expanded to display pictures of the unit, its statistics, and hotkeys. Customizable UI. Have you considered letting players resize, move, or hide UI elements? They could create their own UI elements that suit them more personally. Player profiles. Are there plans to add player profiles for players to personalize their experience within Stormgate through customization? This will make players feel more connected to their experience in Stormgate. There is little reason why this could not be implemented. Leaderboard. The leaderboard leaves a lot to be desired. You cannot double click on players to find out more about them because there are no profiles to display statistics or other interesting notes and you cannot specifically search the name for a player so you must scroll down with this awkward tiny bar to see who is at what rank. So given the leaderboard a bit of polish will make competitive players feel more rewarded. Chat lobbies. Are there plans to add chat lobbies to let players socialize with one another in a general chat or specific chat rooms for private conversations or tournament lobbies? It's very quiet. Having a chat lobby keeps players engaging with one another off the battlefield and lets them coordinate tournament and custom games. Plans. Are there plans to add clans to the game to help create communities for versus, co-op, and custom games? You could also add a search bar in the custom lobby to filter game names as a way to quickly find games if it ever gets to that point where there are too many games listed on the screen. Map editor. This is confirmed and will not only allow players to make compelling verses and co-op missions, but the next topic point of discussion. The almighty important custom games. Custom games are huge for keeping players coming back for more Stormgate. The sandbox potential of custom games are limitless. You could even build your own test map for players to practice playing heroes, units and buildings. I'm going to say this next one whilst gritting my teeth because I'm sure you thought about this too and how it might affect you selling campaign missions, but will players be able to make custom campaigns? I'll let that one sink in and you can ponder the ramifications of it later. In conclusion, Stormgate has a lot of work to do to meet the standards and expectations of players. I hope my review of Stormgate has given some insights on what improvements can be made so that everyone can have a better game to play. Speaking of better game to play, have you heard of Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2? I told you I'd be mentioning them throughout this video. Not just because I'm a fan of those games, but because they are very relevant to the dilemma Stormgate faces. To satisfy RTS fans across the board, particularly of Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2, Stormgate has big shoes to fill. Stormgate does bring some new things to the table, such as the quick build and top bar power console, but fundamentally it is a real-time strategy game that is competing against giants that have already cemented themselves as champions of campaign missions, versus game play and cooperative team play. 
Why should someone buy and play Stormgate when they can play other RTS games like Warcraft 3 and Starcraft 2? It's a harsh, blunt, but fair question. On the bright side, the Frost Giant team come across to me as warm-hearted good people, open and willing to communicate with their community. It could be worse. Do you guys not have phones? Yeah. Thanks for watching this far. If you made it to this point in the video, let me know what your thoughts are about Stormgate. Do you like it? Do you think Stormgate is bad? If so, why? And please do like, share and subscribe this video to help others see it and to get more quality content. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.